How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this really sci-fi looking kind of icy, not really sure how to describe it, but we're gonna be making that. But before we do, let me shout out today's sponsor. So today's sponsor is brought to you by Radical. It's a really, really cool innovative software where you basically film yourself dancing or really doing any kind of motion. And then it takes that, it can, the AI sees what you're doing, converts that to a rig, and then you can take that rig and apply it to a character that's already made. And then that character is moving around doing whatever motion you are doing. You can use any consumer grade camera for this and pretty simply you film yourself or you can even find footage of the internet of someone dancing, whatever you want. And you can run it through the Radical software. It sees what's happening, makes the rig and applies it to your character. Also very soon they're gonna be releasing an add-on that helps the retarget process from the rig to the character. Sometimes it's a bit of a process that's gonna make it super easy. Also, in under a month, they're going to be releasing Radical Studio, which is going to be an on-prem solution and give you unlimited visualization time. As well, they also have a free trial for you to use. In the top link of the description, there is a link to bring you to their website, and there is a 15% discount code for you guys to use. So if this is something you're interested in, check it out. Now let's get on to the tutorial. All right, so first step we're going to do is hit Shift A. We're going to add in an Icosphere. Typically, it has around that many faces. If you click the drop down, click that, just like that. We're going to go ahead and shift A. We're going to add in a plane. We're going to hit it S9 to make it pretty big. And then we'll just go and take this guy and bring him up. I'm going to shift D and duplicate him. And then I'll hit H to hide that guy for now. And we're going to start uh, developing the wireframe for this guy. All right, so go to the modifiers, add in a wireframe. Make it pretty thick, something like something right around here. Then what I'm going to do is add in a bevel. So that's gonna do this really cool number. I'm gonna go ahead and add in another wireframe. So now we have this really cool stuff happening. You can go ahead and play with that bevel, get some new shapes if you like, but I really like how this circle comes through. And then next thing we're gonna do is add in a subdivision surface. And then I'm gonna give it a subdivision surface of two on the viewport, keep the render at two as well. And then you can go ahead and um, subdivide smooth this. If you want this to be thicker, just go ahead and play with different uh, wireframe settings like this, but I personally like this thickness right here. It's really cool, really nice and organic whenever we go and add in that metal texture, which we will be doing later on. One thing I'm gonna do is bring that wireframe, I mean that icosphere back, and then I'm gonna take these two guys, and really this is up to preference how you like um, your thing to be, but I'm gonna hit R twice, and just sort of uh, level him out here, and then place him on the ground, just like that in like just like my um just like my render i'm gonna go to the front view and now we're gonna be playing it with it like that i'm gonna take this inner icosphere and make him a bit smaller so he fits in just like that now let's go ahead and start um, lighting and texturing the guy now let's start lighting this now the light that's going to be on the inside of this sort of ice ball is another icosphere so i'm gonna shift d hit s and make him pretty small something like that and then we'll worry about him later let's go ahead and start shading this so I'm gonna hit period to go here, and I'm just gonna remove that from the view. It's kind of hurting my eyes. Um, actually, I'm gonna uh, hit H and remove that as well. Let's go ahead, click new, give it a transmission here, and then don't worry about the roughness. We're gonna be doing all the roughness right now. Get a color ramp here, and we'll plug the color ramp into the roughness. We'll get in a noise texture right here. Plug the noise texture into the roughness. I'm gonna, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, control T, and bring the object coordinate here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the detail kind of down, uh, keep the scale there, and we're gonna bring this, we're gonna make it very blobby, and then we're gonna use another node to kind of break it up. So if I go here, and I'm gonna switch on over to the Cycles engine, I wanna see how light is interacting with the blob. So I like that, that's how I like it. Um, let's go ahead and make it a bit smaller, something like this. Let me go back to the render view. So I want it to be very shiny here and very glossy there. So now we're gonna go ahead and combine it with another node. So we're gonna get a Musgrave and we're gonna plug this mapping into the Musgrave. And then let's go ahead and just replace this for now so we can get a visual example of what's going on. Bring the dimension down, bring the detail up. Now we have all this crazy stuff. And what I want is for this very rough looking very uh, sandy looking thing to interact with this globular looking thing so they both kind of interact. So I'm gonna get in. So the way to do that is to get a mix RGB right here, plug that there, plug this Musgrave into there, and then they're not really gonna be doing much. It really just looks like this guy's controlling. So you bring the factor over and just kind of do that. 
And what that's going to do for us now is this. And it, once we get the light on the inside working, you really see it interact, but it's a very cool effect. Now, the next thing I want to do here is have one more texture interacting with all this craziness, which is a Voronoi. So I'm going to get a Voronoi VOR, Voronoi texture, bring it down here, and I'm going to plug the uh, distance here into the color ramp. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and actually hit Control T again, because this one's going to need to have a separate texture setup. Use the object coordinate, and on F1, and on F1, go to distance to edge, and that's gonna give us some fun stuff once we start playing with this color ramp here. So it looks like I'm going to need to flip my color ramp just like that. And then we get these really cool lines. Actually, I'm gonna give it, so something like this. You get these crazy lines with this cool Voronoi texture, which is what we're going for. And then now I want them to be less uh, straight up and down, right angle looking. We're gonna do a really quick trick, which is the vector line trick. So this right here, this is the vector line. What this is going to do is distort the Voronoi shape. So if you plug that there, you now you see the Voronoi shape is distorted. I don't want that much distortion, so we're gonna go and get one of these mix RGBs here, and we are going to add that. So we can just limit, so put the object coordinate into color two. What this is going to do is just kind of limit it a little bit, bring that detail up. I do want to bring this, the, uh, the size of it, significantly farther down, so something like this. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down here. These are all their own little group. So I'm just gonna hit G to highlight all of them, bring them down. And then we're gonna get a new color ramp, C-O-L, color ramp for all of these guys to interact with. So I'm gonna plug this here, and then we need another mix RGB. So mix RGB, and then we're gonna plug this color ramp into this. We're gonna plug this mix RGB into this and plug this into this. So you might be confused at this point. Let me help you understand a little bit. These two guys are interacting together and this mix RGB is allowing these two guys to interact. This whole section right here is their own little thing. And so they're going to need their own new mix RGB that's plugged into this set to go here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this color ramp. So now we have this really cool texture in here. So it's like this weird turtle kind of thing that um, I really, really like. If we go to the rendered view here, we get this craziness and I'm a big fan of it. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is click on that little icosphere in the middle, click new, and I'm just going to delete. And I'm gonna go over here and go from principle to emission and then make that very bright here in the middle and give it kind of a blue look. And now we have that going on. I'm gonna bring this big icosphere back, go back to shading. I'm gonna click on the wireframe, click new. We're just gonna do a very simple texture here, get a color ramp here um, right there. Make sure this is metallic, make it fairly dark. And then we're gonna get, we're gonna plug the color into the roughness, get a um, musgrave right here. Click control T for the texture coordinate stuff and then we're gonna plug the musgrave into the color ramp. And then what I'm gonna do is bring the dimension down, detail up, and then here on the black portion, bring it up as well. So now we get this really nice metal, This which, which is what we're going for for this. Yeah? Hey, I actually just got off early. Uh, not saying you have to be over at the house early any earlier. I'm just letting you know I'm already done with work. Okay, cool. I'm in the middle of recording something. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so you interrupted me. And I won't, and I won't forget about. <laughs> so now we have all this fun stuff going on here. I'm gonna go, gonna go here and bring this guy, and then we're gonna do pretty much the same texture here on the bottom, but we're gonna have it a little bit more reflective. So click new. We're gonna get a metallic. We're gonna make it pretty dark, because we are gonna have some pretty bright lights going on here in a little bit. Get in a color ramp. C O L, color ramp. Oops, wrong one color ramp and then um, roughness, musgrave texture, control T, and then uh, musgrave texture. We're gonna bring dimension down, detail up, and we're gonna leave it there, which is nice about this, is it's very reflective and I like that a lot. Bring my scale down to three. Okay, 
So now let's go ahead and start lighting it. I'm gonna hit the front for the tilde key, get my camera, control alt zero, snap it to view, and I do wanna give it a 100 millimeter focal length. So one, zero, zero, right down here, this little green eye, Cam click on your camera, green icon, 100 millimeter, and we're gonna bring it over. And then I kinda wanna bring it just to make a little bit more interest right there. And then I'm gonna bring it down sort of figure out my composition. How do I want it to look? Something like this. I do want it to look very weird and very ominous. So we're gonna give it right about that. And then I'll bring my floor a little bit farther back. All right, so now we have this as our render. Looks cool, but we can take this further with a little bit of volume. So what I wanna do is just get a box that encompasses the whole thing. S9, Control A, Apply Scale. And then I'll just take and then maybe make it a little bit bigger so the camera is inside the whole box. What I'm gonna do is now give it a new material, which is going to be a principled volume. Head on over here to shading, and then make and put this into the volume socket. Not sure why that's not there by default, but that's just where it needs to be. We're gonna give it a density of 0 0.1, and then we're gonna use scene 0 0.1, and then let's get a light, which is my favorite thing to use is an area light. So we're gonna bring this up here. We're gonna make it pretty bright and we're gonna make it that nice ominous kind of blue. And you can see when we render this here, how much better it makes the scene look, better reflections, better volume. It's just much, much nicer. We're gonna bring this power of the light much brighter, something like this, because we are gonna do a little bit of Photoshop to this. And here we go, this is the render so far, and my render, the uh, wireframe was a bit thicker. So you can just do that on the first thickness here, and now you have that, but of course now we need to bring it up a little bit, no big problem. And now we have this. Now let's go ahead and render this guy. I don't wanna use denoising for this because I do kinda like the grittiness of noise. I'm gonna give this around 500 to 800 samples. I'm gonna give it 500, render that out, and we're gonna head on over to some compositing when we're finished here. All right, now it's finished rendering. Let's head on over to compositing. Click Use Nodes, Shift A, add a viewer node here so we can see what's going on in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and get in a glare node, which is the most important thing here. Pop that there and use Fog Glow. Now we're just gonna stick there, maybe add the uh, mix down, down by three. That looks about right. Now we're done here. Make sure to plug the glare into the composite. And then in rendering, we have this really cool thing going on. I'm gonna save it, save the image here. I'm just gonna give it a random BOX, to simple name. And then we're gonna save the image and let's head on over to Photoshop. Now I'm using Photoshop and I know a lot of Blender users do not like Adobe products. GIMP and the other ones have the same features I'm gonna be talking about. So whatever I'm doing, it's easily copyable. It might just be called something different in the program that you want to use. But I use Photoshop. I've been doing graphic design for years and the Adobe suite is suited to my needs. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna get, so what I'm gonna do here is pop in and place embedded a a dust texture. So this guy right here. If you just go on the internet and look up free dust texture, this will show up or you know, just there's a there's a lot of these. I just picked the first one that I saw. It doesn't matter whatever one you want to work. I'm gonna scale it up here and I'm gonna go here to the uh, camera raw filter and I'm gonna get in here, give it a blue tint just like the scene is. We're gonna bring the contrast down and then here on the curves, I am going to bring it down some more. So now I like this, I'm gonna click okay. The reason I did those changes is when I go over here into the screen mode, it's gonna do this, but I don't like it. It looks like snow, it doesn't look like, you know, it doesn't look like the kind of look I'm going for. So I'm gonna go here to the filter, to the blur gallery, I mean here to the blur and get in a motion blur. Now what that's going to do for me is when I bring it up, this happens and this is way more what I'm looking for. It adds a really nice effect, adds some excitement, adds some motion, which is exactly what I'm looking for for this design. Good, and the design here is finished. The render's finished, this looks awesome. You can sell this, you can use this as a wallpaper, whatever you wanna do. It's a really cool, fun design. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something.